It's Christmas Eve. The big day is just hours away, and so much of that Christmassy feeling is a sense of anticipation. The feeling that something magical is about to happen, which in itself is a magical feeling. And tonight, more than any other night, that sense of magic and anticipation is at a peak. Everywhere you look, lights are twinkling, through living room windows where Christmas trees are visible from the street to every passerby, through store windows where last-minute shoppers cross those final items off their lists, in candlelit dining rooms where families eat and laugh and remember. Because this is a night for remembering, for sharing old memories, for making new ones, for practicing traditions and passing them on, for recounting the various pieces of folklore that, when taken as a whole, tell the story of our families, the story of ourselves. On Christmas Eve, all of our senses are engaged. The flavors of holiday foods, the sound of Christmas carols and logs crackling in the fireplace, the smell of candles burning and that metallic tinge when there's a nip in the air, the warmth of a cozy gathering in an ugly sweater, and the sight of Christmas trees and mantle displays and 24-hour movie marathons. And there's a slight bitter sweetness, a sense that we need to savor it all while we can, that tomorrow will come and go all too soon. You know, all throughout this season of Christmas past, I've been sharing your Christmas memories, but only a few of my own. I realize that I owe you one, so let me do that now, and I'll get a little help along the way. I'm Brian Earle. This is Christmas Past. I grew up in a town called Stoughton, Massachusetts, just a half hour south of Boston. I'm one of five children. My mom is one of six, my dad one of five. And with only one or two exceptions, all of my aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents lived within a 15 minute drive from one another. I didn't realize until I was much older just how unusual and lucky it was that my entire family was together each and every Christmas Eve. Around dinner time, we would all pile into the old Chevy Caprice Classic station wagon, the kind with the imitation wood paneling on the doors, and we'd head down to my grandparents' house on the other side of town. My Nana and Grandpa, we called them. They had a tiny house. Tiny. I remember walking in the house, and it would be so warm. That's my sister, Jen. It was such a small house, but it always felt really big on Christmas Eve. My grandfather would have a fire going. He'd be the first to come greet us with his red sweater on, always making sure that we were attended to and see if we needed something to eat or offer us something to drink. Most families celebrate Christmas Eve in a similar way, by coming together and enjoying the sights and the sounds of the season and each other's company. But most families have a handful of traditions unique to them. My mother making a cake and we sang happy birthday to Jesus. My Aunt Pam. And yes, that actually happened every Christmas Eve. My grandmother was active in the Methodist church. And every year she would bake a cake and we would sing happy birthday to Jesus. Well, Mom was uh, always uh, very fond of her chocolate cake recipes. That's my Uncle Scott. When I was younger, I looked forward to helping her bake the cake and frosting it and putting on the candles. Never understood the the number of candles, so I think she just put on what she felt was appropriate to give it uh, its glow. And my grandmother would pass around sheet music from her church, and we would sing Christmas carols. I think I was in my 20s when I realized that most families don't actually sit around singing Christmas carols on Christmas Eve. And the funniest part about that is when I was probably five... We would go into Boston, look at the lights, and on our way home, we'd sing Christmas carols in the car. And we all got to pick out a Christmas song. Well, being five, I decided to sing Roll, Roll, Roll Your Boat. And my father thought that was so funny that it became a tradition. Every Christmas, when we were down there Christmas Eve and picked our song, we would always pick Row, Row, Row Your Boat, and we always sang that. And there's one other thing we did, another one of those things I had no idea until later that it wasn't something other families did too. After the food had been eaten and the carols sung, after the last log in the fireplace had burned down to glowing embers, we would go around the room and each of us in turn would name all of the things we were grateful for that year. 
I'll be honest, it seemed like the only people who were actually into that idea were my grandparents. It got pretty schmaltzy and uncomfortable on more than one occasion, but hey, that's family for you. So I hope that wherever you are tonight, whoever you're with, however you're celebrating, you'll take a moment to count your blessings, cherish your loved ones, and reflect on what you're thankful for. My family hasn't practiced that tradition for decades. But that's going to change this year. Want to hear it? Be sure to catch tomorrow's Christmas Day mini-episode, the final one of 2016. We'll hear more from my family and do a little year-in-review wrap-up. Until then, this is Brian Earle wishing you and your family a warm and wonderful and safe Christmas Eve.